Well, good afternoon everybody, welcome to ICS TV. We are here in the last session of the ICS on Friday afternoon. And what we want to uh, show to you is uh, some very nice basic research work on neurophysiology. This is my co-chair. Good afternoon, I'm Margot Damaser, and uh, I'm here with John Heeslickers. Yes, thank you. And, uh, and our first poster is Dr. Kuo, who's going to take a minute and tell us about his research. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, let's start. Uh, everything, as we know, uh, the ICBPS is a chronic uh, deliberating uh, disease involving the uh, apoptosis and chronic inflammation of the bladder tissue. Previous studies have uh, proved the efficacy of intravesical botulinum toxin A uh, injection uh, to uh, under treatment of ICBPS, but uh, the long-term uh, result uh, uh, is uh, always not, not good. Uh, this study, we investigate uh, the change of apoptotic activities and in inflammatory proteins after repeated uh, botulinum toxin A injection and their association with the clinical parameters. The results uh, from the, uh, for the immunohistochemistry standard IHC study, we can find uh, after three times of Botox injection and the mast cells and uh, the apoptotic cell count decreased significantly. However, uh, if we uh, in just, just one time of Botox, uh, there's no significant uh, decrease uh, of the both uh, cell activity. And for the Western blood uh, result also show the um, similar effect. If we inject uh, once, uh, Botox once, then we can only uh, find uh, the Bax and the P PP38 can uh, decrease significantly, but uh, the treatise uh, cannot. But if we inject it for three times, then uh, all, all the uh, cytokines and the tryptase and the, a, it also the SNAP25 decreased significantly. Uh, this part, we, we have 11 patients. All of these patients uh, have the same thing. And if we uh, combine it with the clinical uh, uh, parameters, you can see uh, after one time of injection, only a subjective symptom like uh, IC scores, uh, pain scores, and uh, only these two cytokines uh, decrease uh, significantly. But if we uh, inject it for three times uh, this way, and then uh, more uh, uh, both uh, subjective and objective uh, parameters decrease significantly. And all, also uh, the conversion degree under cystoscopic and uh, IHC and the uh, Western blood parameters or decrease significantly. May, may, so if, may, I, may I ask you, what will, how will that impact clinical work finally? So from his result, we can see uh, if we uh, inject the Botox for more, day, more times, then uh, we can see the uh, apoptotic effect and in the inflammation, uh, inflammation phenomenon uh, goes down uh, uh, regular, uh, gradually. So if we just inject for one time, it is not sufficient to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to cause the effect. And uh, we also found that uh, instead of uh, just blocking the sensory nerve, uh, the Botox injection can also have the effect of anti-inflammatory and the anti-apoptotic effect, which uh, provide a, a basic uh, uh, the basic uh, theory for Botox injection. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. We'd love to hear it on stage as well in a few minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Siya Inoue from Japan. In uh, this study, we uh, tried to identify the relationship between uh, blood, blood flow and detrus of activity in SHR rat model. Uh, in this uh, in this experiment, we used three vasodilating drugs, uh, nicorandyl, hydroxyphacidyl, and cerodicine. Uh, and we checked uh, metabolic cages and systematries and uh, blood blood flow by estimated hydrogen clearance method, and then uh, organ bus and energy F bus estimated ELISA method. Uh, in the result, uh, 
metabolic cages and CMGs, single body volume are increased significantly uh, compared to control. And uh, blood blood flow and energy of concentrations are uh, decreased to normal level. So the, uh, our results indicate that there is important relation between blood blood, blood uh, brother, 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 and the rules of activity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Which one is your favorite of the three drugs? Uh, I love hydroxyphacidil. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. We continue to post the 238. Dr. Honda, please, can you tell us what it is about? The title of my talk today, Effects of Sensor Neurospecific Receptor Agonist on Body Function in a Rat Model of Cystitis Induced by CYP. A novel family of G protein coupled receptors has been recently identified in rat dorsal root ganglia and named as sensory neurospecific receptors. Uh, recently, we demonstrated that activation of SNSRs can inhibit the mixtation reflex in uh, normal rats. Uh, to our knowledge, uh, it is unclear whether SNSR have a, uh, has a role in various pathological conditions. Uh, in this study, we will investigate the effects of activation of SNSR uh, on CYP-induced bladder overactivity in rats. CYP treatment induced a higher uh, uh, baseline pressure and a shorter intercontraction intervals compared with the control group. Uh, intravenous or intrathecal administration, BAM-822, uh, significantly includes the uh, ICI, uh, but did not affect uh, baseline pressure or uh, maximum avoiding pressure. Uh, these findings indicate that uh, activation of SNSR can improve the CYP-induced bladder of activity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice, exciting work. Dr. Zha? Thank you very much. In this study, we investigate the association, the association between LATS and the met metabolic syndrome in all of the rats. We checked the average body weight, the systolic blood pressure, and the blood bathymetry examination. Then we, investigate, uh, we examined the mean volume volume and the micturation frequency uh, and uh, mass, um, uh, systematic studies. Additionally, we checked the ATP, PG2, and the NGF uh, released from the stretched bladder epithelium. And uh, finally, we we checked the oxidative stress marker, 8-OHDG, and the uh, MRA expression uh, of the receptors in the bladder of uh, all rats. And uh, in conclusion, we got a conclusion of uh, there is a significant association between met metabolic syndrome and loss in all rats. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. This is a very long study, one year for a rat. How do you keep them alive? Two years. Congratulations. Okay, post 240, Dr. Chow. Cheers. Yeah, this is about, uh, we, we are about, we are doing the research of the uh, diabetic rats for the long term. They are, we are researching their bladder dysfunction. So this is, uh, we are doing some rat model, urinary diversion model. So we are just disconnect their ureter to the uh, vagina, and so urine goes, urine flow goes from kidney to vagina, and then we found the, uh, and also we are doing some resin blood on the after the research we doing resin blood on their uh, blood tissues, and we found that uh, uh, for diabetes and the urinary with diabetes. Uh, the nitro tyrosine and the uh, uh, amine sod is going high, but uh, for other group it's going low. So we found that uh, polyuria caused the uh, early age uh, bladder uh, compensation and uh, hypoglycemia caused uh, the late stage uh, uh, bladder dysfunction and the uh, oxidative of oxidative stress increased. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Is it difficult to do that kind of operations? Uh, 
Is oké? Okay? <laughs> oké. <Okay>. Dr. Ribeiro? <laughs> oké. Okay. And the heim of this study was to investigate the mechanisms involved in the role of prime induced relaxation in the big, the big bladder neck. Uh, in the phenylephrine pre-contracted samples, we see that role prime induced uh, potent relaxation. And um, with this relaxation compared to the one obtained with the adenyl C class activator, the role prime produces a more relaxation of that. Also, uh, the relaxation induced by Rolly Prime increased when we added uh, this activator, Forskolin. In the presence of the protein kinase inhibitor, we see a reduce in this relaxation. So, uh, that is mean Rolly Prime uh, induces the relaxation via protein kinase A pathway. Uh, in the pre-contracted strips with a physiological solution rich in potassium, we see that roliprim reduce um, the relaxation induced by roliprim was reduced with this solution. So uh, that is mean the, there are uh, um, potassium channels involucrated invol in this response. So. Uh, we block the large and intermediate uh, conductance act uh, calcium activated potassium channels and we see that uh, relaxation was reduced. Uh, so uh, Roliprim produces relaxation uh, throughout uh, via uh, large and intermediate uh, calcium activated potassium channels. In the human samples, we see that, or we can confirm that uh, relaxation by, induced by Roliprim. Furthermore, we can see the physical activity is reduced by the, this drug. So, uh, blockers of protein kinase A pathway uh, and these channels. Uh, may be useful for urinary incontinence treatment produced by intrinsic sphincteric deficiency. Okay, thank you. thank you very much. Very clear explanation. We continue. Dr. Sumino, yep. please. Can you explain what is it about? Uh, thank you, Chairman. So today I want to talk about in IGF-1 accelerates recovery from stress urinary incontinence in rats with simulated childbirth trauma injury through AKT signal transduction pathway. IGF-1 plays an important role in cell proliferation, survival, and regeneration in various tissues. However, the therapeutic potential of IGF-1 for stress urinary incontinence has not been explored. We therefore ex examined the effect of IGF-1 in rat model of SUI induced by simulated childbirth trauma injury. At first, uh, we divided three groups uh, randomized to uh, either human recombinant IGF-1 treated group or a vehicle treated group. So IGF-1 treated group showed a significant improvement in leak point pressure and ulcerative baseline pressure and so it is a response during passive increment after four days and seven days after vaginal distension. And so in uh, Western, Western abroad things, the IGF-1 treatment uh, significantly um, upregulated uh, and so uh, uh, significantly uh, promoting, promoted uh, phosphorylation of AKT. And so we have examined the anti-apoptotic effect on the cell proliferative effect and so IGF-1 treatment significantly promoted Caspers 3 activity and the uh, tunnel cells, uh, positive cells. And so in conclusion, IGF-1 treatment accelerates recovery from SUI induced by stimulated childbirth trauma in rats. These therapeutic effects are associated with increased cell proliferation and reduced apoptotic changes, which are possibly induced by activation of the AKT signal transduction pathway. IGF-1 is uh, likely to have an important therapeutic role in the recovery from childbirth-related SUI. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sumino. Interstitial cells, um, analogous to interstitial cells of Cajal, um, may generate 
uh, phasic activity um, in smooth muscle tissues, including the bladder. Now, currently, the specific marker for ICs is C-KIT. However, recently, um, anoctamine 1, um, which is a calcium-activated chloride channel, has been identified um, to influence the generation of pacemaker activity in ICs of the gut and may therefore act as a specific marker of these cells. Therefore, the aim of this study was to investigate whether anil one is actually expressed in porcine urinary bladder and to test the effect of niflumic acid, which is a calcium-activated uh, chloride channel blocker in um, modulating the phasic activity of mucosal and denuded detrusive strips from the pig bladder. Um, so the results showed that basically um, anil one is expressed in the mucosa and the true layers of pig urinary bladder. Um, testing the effect of niflumic acid, increasing concentration of niflumic acid on uh, basal spontaneous activity of mucosal strips showed that the amplitude and the frequency of spontaneous contractions are inhibited by niflumic acid at 10 and 30 micromolar for amplitude and at 30 micromolar for frequency. Um, we did not see any um, basal spontaneous activity in mucosal strips, sorry, in the new detrusive strips. So we had to induce the spontaneous activity by applying a small concentration of a cholinergic agonist carbocal. And we saw that niflumic acid did not have an effect on the amplitude or the frequency of these spontaneous contractions. So therefore, we have shown for the first time that ano one is actually expressed in the pig bladder and um, um, niflumic acid was able to modulate the basal phasic contractions, which may suggest that um, ano one channels may be important in mediating the phasic activity of ICs found in the subutyl layer. And niflumic acid did not have an effect on the cholinergic-induced phasic activity on, in the new strips, which might suggest that uh, niflumic acid uh, has an effect on basal phasic activity generated by ICs, but not affecting the direct muscle stimulation or IC stimulation by cholinergic agonist carbocal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Last but not least. Please, Dr. Sullivan. Thank you very much. So the purpose of our study was to look at the interaction between uh, angiotensin and caviolin proteins and to determine whether these interactions are involved with changes in function. So in our first experiments, we, looked, we performed in immunoprecipitation, and we found that if we immunoprecipitated any one of the caviolin proteins, we were able to immunoblot with angiotensin receptor 1, demonstrating that there's a physical interaction between these proteins. Next, we um, used two different methods to stimulate um, bladder tissue in, vi in vitro to recreate an obstructive, obstructive environment. In the first case, we were... Um, incubating tissue with angiotensin II for eight hours, and we found that angiotensin significantly increases the expression of all three caviolins, both at the gene expression level and in the proteins, and this is shown here. Um, both with angiotensin II um, stimulation as well as with electric field stimulation, we're showing that after eight hours of stimulation, there's a significant increase in the force that's generated under both conditions. We also found that if we pre-incubate the tissue with losartan, we're able to prevent not uh, the upregulation or, I'm sorry, the increase in the expression or the release of angiotensin over the eight-hour time period. We also prevented the increase in the um, expression of uh, all three caviolin proteins at, uh, and as well as the gene expression. So in conclusion, we believe that the angiotensin system, the signaling processes are regulated by uh, cavioli, and that this may be important for understanding pathophysiological processes like the bladder outlet obstruction, where we know that the angiotensin system is altered. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think we finalize this session. <laughs>